Hi, this is Melanie for the Pardaisy Channel. I'm here to do something different and talk about a Hollywood film, and that's Annihilation. This is a request by at Mr. Rajesha on Twitter. Like Mr. Rajesha, this is a film that I saw with my husband and we can't stop talking about it. <laughs> so it has so many themes, so many interesting ambiguities that it's the kind of film that you just keep puzzling over and talking about. And so I understand his own post. He was like, can you please talk about Annihilation? Uh, because it's one that you just want to discuss. So part of this review will be spoiler free. And then to really get into the meat of the film, I'm gonna to have to go into spoilers because there's no other way to really discuss some of the themes and some of the things that really had me talking unless I get into spoilers. Okay, so for the beginning, no spoilers. Kind of a summary. Um, if, you've, if you've seen the trailer, you know something mysterious has happened to Natalie Portman's husband and she decides to go into this strange a thing called the Shimmer. And there's an expedition team with her and then all sorts of bizarre things happen. And you can see things like deer with antlers that have flowers on them and all sorts of bizarre things. Uh, what you need to know is that this film is uh, written and directed by Alex Garland. Alex Garland got an Oscar nomination for his script for Ex Machina, his previous film, which was almost like a stage play and that it was a very small contained kind of movie and this film Annihilation has a bigger canvas but they're both in the sci-fi realm and in the sci-fi realm sort of a cerebral sci-fi realm where it just gives you a lot to think about which is the kind of sci-fi that I really enjoy. Alice Garland before he became a director was known as a screenwriter he wrote the script for Never Let Me Go. That was also an ad adaptation of a book, As Annihilation Is. I really, really admire his work. Ex Machina was one, it remains one of my favorite films. The sort of Steve Jobs kind of character from that film was played by Oscar Isaacs. And Oscar, Oscar Isaac, who you may know as Poe in the Star Wars films, he's the actor that plays the husband of Natalie Portman in Annihilation, who there's something mysterious going on with him. Even from the trailer, we can see that he's hooked up to like life support things and we don't know what happened. So without getting into too many spoilers, Natalie Portman is a scientist. She's a biologist, she studies cancer. And she, the film begins and she's missing her husband and we find out that he's been gone for a year and then suddenly he shows up. But he can't answer any questions about where he's been. He just keeps saying, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I just arrived here. You know, I don't know. And it's all very puzzling. And suddenly he becomes extremely ill. And so she, she then wants to find out what has happened to him, what his mission really was. I mean, she was guessing that he was in the Middle East or something. No, he was investigating the shimmer. If this movie, Annihilation, is if, I've heard it described as, as if Arrival, Alien, and Ex Machina had a baby. <laughs> and that was pretty accurate because it has a lot of different feels to it. It has that woman focus of a woman scientist like Arrival did and sort of that sense of wonderment at some some sort of alien something alien has arrived on our planet we're not exactly sure what it is so that kind of is the feel and also just that meditative feel and that wonderment of incredible visuals that arrival had there are some scares <laughs> and that is what the alien part is like there's some gross out parts and if you like oh <laughs> scares it has also, because it's the brilliance of Alex Garland, it has that feel of ex machina. I loved the contemplative feel. The scares were truly scary. There's a couple of creatures. There's sort of this bear-like creature that is so, I can't even get into why it's so creepy until the spoiler section. It works on several levels. I saw an interesting video which I will try to find again and put in the description. So Alex Garland described how 
he learned from his mistakes in writing the script of Never Let Me Go that everything was the same tone. And so this video was describing the bizarre dance number that Oscar Isaacs does in the middle of Ex Machina with the robot. And he said he purposely put that scene in there to wake the audience up. You know, that otherwise everything was kind of in the same tone and contemplative and he just wanted to jolt everyone awake by doing something completely different. And that's what it felt like he's even gone a step beyond in this film in Annihilation where it has some of the scares and the jumps and the oh my god a monster is after us feel of some other kind of sci-fi films like Alien. But it doesn't just completely go there. There's also wonderment and an expedition of all women <laughs> like it's just it's so radical all women i would mention natalie portman the other members of this team there's a swedish actress that i'm not familiar with but uh kind of a uh, military person on the team is played by gina rodriguez and she is the star of Jane the Virgin on TV, which I love. This is a completely different role. I don't, don't believe she's ever had more than a very small role, possibly in another film, nothing that I ever remembered. So this was a really great role for her. She's playing a lesbian military. She obviously really buffed up and she was great in this. Tessa Thompson, who, I was like, who is that? Because she's playing this very shut down emotionally, uh, other physicist scientist on the team. Well, I was like, we're racking my brain. Where did I see her? And then my son is just like mocking to me after the movie. Thor, <laughs> she was in Thor Ragnarok as the guy that captures Thor on, um, you know, like she's the bounty hunter guy. It was great. She was playing something very different. And then the psychologist on the team is played by Jennifer Jason Lee, who I'm very familiar with. Maybe you guys aren't, but Jennifer Jason Lee was huge, especially in films in the 80s. And of course she had a crazy part in Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Eight. Fun to see her in this movie. She's, you know, she ha obviously has some sort of different offbeat agenda. She just, she kind of uses that uh, quirkiness that she sometimes has to good effect in this film. And then the only other men that are really in it, like I said, Oscar Isaac, but he's sick in a hospital bed for a lot. Um, when, Natalie Portman is interrogated about her experiences. The actor that's interrogating her is Benedict Wong, who we last saw in Doctor Strange. I mean, one thing that was, like I said, was so great about it is, is this, normally we have a team of guys and this is a team of all women. Like, <laughs> number one, I'm, it's awesome just from that. Okay, so it's it works. I think it's a brilliant film. I think Ex Machina is a better film but this one I thought was really, really good. I don't think it's getting the attention that it should. Maybe it's not for everybody, but it was a kind of film that I really loved. And one, like I said, my husband and I spent hours talking about it. My husband found some videos on YouTube that really discussed some of the themes, which then led to further discussions between us. Okay, so at this point, I'm just telling you, it's an awesome film. If you loved Ex Machina, you're gonna love this. <laughs> so, and if you haven't seen Ex Machina, what is wrong with you? Go watch it immediately. At this point, I'm gonna get into a spoiler section because I, I think what Mr. Rajesha really wanted was a discussion of what the hell did I just watch that blew my mind? <laughs> and I agree with you because it blew my mind too. And I couldn't, you know, I need to talk about it. Okay, so spoilers at this point, please do not go forward if you have not seen the film. So one of the interesting things in the, when it, I'm gonna to try to find the YouTube video that my husband watched, but Mr. Rajesha, I'm speaking to you, some of the themes that this guy discussed and little triggers and clues that we get. What does Natalie Portman's scientist discuss at the beginning of the film? Cancer. All of the things that the aliens do and how they act on everyone's DNA and whatever can also be, it can be an allegory of how cancer affects the body. And, and so, you know, how it alters some things and the, for instance, the phosphor 
phosphorus grenade that Oscar Isaacs uses to, you know, can also be similar to either like blasting a tumor with radiation or surgery to kind of try to excise that out, but yet it still has altered other parts of the body. Another interesting thing that she talks about at the beginning of the film, remember when she's in bed with Oscar Isaacs and she talks about how cells, biological cells have a self-destruct mechanism in them and that's what causes aging. You see that all different kind of self-destructive behaviors and that all the different uh, people, both Oscar Isaac and all the other, especially Natalie Portman with the affair that she had, but it was interesting how that self-destruction of all these people manifested itself once they had, were refracted or whatever <laughs> altered by the shimmer. So for instance, Tessa Thompson's character I had always worn long, long sleeves because she had done cutting on her arms. And I thought it was so interesting that they just took that a step beyond so she's the one that's fascinated by all of those plants that grew, had like had their DNA warped with human DNA so that they took on the biological form with arms and legs of a human form, but yet they were plants. And then when, at the end, she, she has like little plants growing out of her arm. So that's the same way like that you, for instance, like navel oranges are grafted or wine is grafted onto other plant stock to grow different varieties. And so that's what it reminded me, me of, is it was almost like it was a grafting and all those places that she had had cuttings on her arms and whatever was suddenly growing with plant life and maybe she just sort of disappeared into becoming a plant or something, I don't know. That was one of the ambiguous things, but it was interesting kind of exploring self-destruction in that way. And uh, Natalie Portman, obviously, she had the guilt from the affair that she'd had and so forth. The other thing that I, so I was wondering if it was sort of like climate change and chemical spills and things like that, if it was supposed to be an allegory about how we are changing our environment and our environment is changing us, you know? And so obviously one of the big ambiguities is at the end, was it the doppelganger or was it Natalie Portman's Lena that walked out of that lighthouse? And you know, evidently my husband said, he saw one article or video saying that it was even more ambiguous or something which one it was, and then they altered the ad ending slightly. So, but I think it's still somewhat ambiguous. To me, it was the doppelganger that she killed with the explosion. However, as we saw, she everything within the shimmer was had their DNA refracted and whatever, and was getting stuff from its environment. In the same way like that bear took the sounds of the woman it killed. Oh my God, was it the creepiest thing ever? <laughs> that skull face, and then it would open its mouth and, and have the, help me. oh my God, that was so creepy. That was just, oh my God. But anyway, how you kind of incorporating the DNA from things around you, everything is going through the prism of the shimmer. So she was altered. Even if it was the original Lena, she was still altered. And so like I, I was whispering to my son who was sitting next to me, I'm like, did she have that tattoo? So if you remember the uh, figure eight snake tattoo, Gina Rodriguez's character had, the, the military girl. And suddenly by the end of the movie, Lena has it on her arm. And so that was another clue one thing that this uh, YouTube video also pointed out is how even from the beginning, the first time that Oscar Isaacs comes home, every, we're seeing them holding hands through the refraction of the glass of water. And we see that again in the interrogation. And so I'm still trying to puzzle out, is it the real Lena or was not And I was noticing doppelgamer Oscar Isaacs, her husband, kept saying, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, you know, when he was, she was trying to interrogate him at the kitchen table. And she spoke like that quite a bit in the interrogation with Benedict Wong. 
a lot of, you know, he would say, is so is such and such person alive? And if they were absolutely dead, she said, they're dead. But otherwise she would say, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And so she was speaking in some ways like the doppelganger Oscar Isaacs. And then, of course, at the end, when they embrace, he said, are you Lena? And they embrace, and she has a little bit of the shimmer in her eyes. So it leaves it somewhat ambiguous. I think it was the original Lena, but that she's altered. But I loved how it just, it doesn't, ha it's not tied with a bow. You could sit there and talk about it and argue. And so I would love to know what your take is. If you think it was the doppelganger, uh, you know, that somehow in the middle of the fight switch places or whatever, or if it was the original Lena, but she's altered and, or infected, if you will, because remember she tested her blood even before she encountered the doppelganger at the lighthouse and her blood was already had the shimmer and was already altered. Well, I don't know. And then my husband was like, well, why would the alien force make a doppelganger out of Oscar Isaacs and a doppelganger out of Natalie Portman. But when the Jennifer Jason Lee character, the psychiatrist, psychologist was in the lighthouse, instead of making a doppelganger out of her, it created like that energy ball thing. And I don't, that's another one of those ambiguities. I don't have an answer to that. Um, I said maybe it was because she did have cancer. Maybe she wasn't the perfect vessel for it, I don't know. <laughs> or it had to build up energy then to make it out of the Lena character, it just took a couple of drops of her blood. That's another one of those things that you could argue to the end of time. So I'd love to know what you thought about that. But the bottom line is, I really loved the film. I thought it was visually stunning, so imaginative. I don't know that it's going to be, you know, a big blockbuster kind of film. It seems to be kind of quiet. I don't know how many people are seeing it. I loved it. I loved it. Let me know in the comments if you've seen the film, if you'd like the film. I know this is not my normal thing, but <laughs> I'm doing it. So I'm not going to review all the Hollywood films that I see, but this is the kind of film that you, like I said, you can, you can argue all the ambiguities and all of the things that are left to wonder about in this kind of a film. And it just spurs so much discussion, which is really fun. Anyway, Follow us on Twitter at PardaisyYT, and I'll see you again when I watch another Indian movie.